Hi guys, it's Rob from Royal Balls and I've got another one of those thought-provoking videos for you today. It's taken me a long time to actually pluck up the courage to publish this on YouTube uh, because some of the things you're about to see probably go a little bit against the grain. So several years ago um, I started to notice that my snakes were exhibiting some behaviours which were perhaps a little unconventional or unexpected. I noticed that when I fed my snakes they started to bowl wrap which is typically cooling behaviour and of course as you know I live in the tropics and keep my snakes on ambient temperature uh, so they have no access to heat mats but my conventional thinking was that snakes need to stay warm in order to digest their food so at the very least I would have expected them to sort of curl up um, at the back of the tub and digest their food I certainly did not expect them to start cool seeking and from reading all the literature and looking at all the videos that I could find on YouTube of behaviors of tropical snakes in artificial setups where they're provided with artificial heat sure enough after eating the snakes either bed down over the hot spot or they curl up underneath the heat lamp my snakes don't do that so it's taken me quite a while to actually get the right conditions to be able to illustrate this behavior I had to wait for several cool days so that my snake room stabilized out at about 28 degrees centigrade the walls cooled down to 28 centigrade the ambient temperature in the snake room was 28 centigrade the tubs were at 28 centigrade and I do not get those conditions very often more often than not the snakes do have access to some radiated heat from retained heat in the walls so you can see that it has actually taken me quite a while to get the right conditions to be able to illustrate what I need to show you guys so after several days of cool I came in to the snake room the morning after I'd fed my snakes to find conditions were perfect so I shot this video let's take a look okay guys I want to capture this for you it's very early on the morning 6:23. it's still dark outside and the ambient temperature in the snake room has dropped to just above 28 if I look at my weather station the weather station here is quite close 27.7 uh, but you'll see that the outside temperature is actually 25 so it's quite cool out it's been raining all night and I fed last night I fed my snakes last night so we're just going to have a look around the snake room and see what the temperature of the snakes are given that it is about 28 degrees ambient here in the snake room okay so I'm going to heat gun the outside walls and you can see that the outside walls have also dropped to 28 degrees exactly the same temperature as ambient here in the snake room so there's no radiated heat coming from the walls anymore everything is sitting at 28 degrees but my snakes are sitting at 29 degrees. How is that possible? Twenty nine degrees for this snake as well. Twenty nine degrees for this snake, also. Let me just repeat that exercise and heat gun the outside wall. Twenty eight degrees. How odd. So, my snakes inside the snake room where ambient is twenty eight degrees, 
the outside walls are at 28 degrees so there's no radiated heat from the walls but my snakes are sitting at 29 degrees one centigrade higher than ambient temperature how are they doing that okay let me show you the hatchling rack as well so not just the big snakes but let's heat gun some of the smaller snakes these guys also ate yesterday so even the smaller snakes are managing somehow to maintain their body temperature at least one degree centigrade over ambient temperature There's one that's even warmer, 29.5. All my snakes are one degree centigrade warmer than ambient temperature. There's the outside wall again, just for reference. 28 degrees now unfortunately we're going to need a little bit of science and we're going to need some definitions here before we go any further uh, with this video so the first term we need to get our heads around is thermoregulation thermoregulation is the ability of an animal to maintain its body temperature at something other than ambient it might be cooler than it might be warmer than but they are able to regulate their own body temperatures in the range that they prefer rather than being reliant on ambient. So in biology we talk about endothermic animals and ectothermic animals. Endo means inside, ecto means outside. So of course endothermic animals like ourselves maintain their body temperatures from heat they generate internally ectothermic animals maintain their body temperatures by relying on heat sources external to their bodies or at least that's what I thought so an ectothermic animal typically would sunbathe or find a hot rock to curl up against in order to stay warm or it would find a nice cool spot like underground in order to stay cool so snakes are not cold-blooded they do maintain a fairly warm blooded temperature but they do this by their behavior rather than relying on their own internal heat we're also going to need some chemical terms uh, something to define effects of metabolism and here it gets a little confusing because we've talked about endothermic animals and ectothermic animals those are biological terms relating to thermoregulation. In chemistry or in metabolism we talk about endothermic activities or exothermic activities. Endo again means inside and exo means outside but here it has the reverse meaning. An example of an endothermic reaction is where we take energy in. Photosynthesis for example takes the energy from the sun and absorbs carbon dioxide and water to produce nutrients that can be stored within the plant and a byproduct of an endothermic reaction is oxygen the reverse would happen when we burn that plant now in order to start this exothermic activity that obviously gives off heat we are converting the energy stored in the plant back into heat we do need to add a certain amount of energy in order to fire up that reaction so we do need a little bit of heat in order to fire up an exothermic reaction so do our snakes but once we start that burning process we're actually reversing the chemical reaction what we do 
is to release energy in the form of heat and we're going to take in oxygen in order to do it. It's an oxidization process and the byproduct of that burning to produce heat is carbon dioxide and water. This animal here produces plenty of carbon dioxide and water in the process of the exothermic activity of maintaining my body temperature. So, snakes, when they eat, if you've watched my food cycling video, you will know that a snake's metabolic activity immediately after eating goes sky high. And one of the signs that metabolic activity is increased is an increase in oxygen uptake by up to 60%. Digestion in snakes is an exothermic reaction and generates its own heat. Your snake needs to be at a certain temperature to kickstart the process, but once digestion commences, it's an exothermic process. My snakes are one to one and a half degrees warmer than ambient temperature after they have eaten. No wonder that they sometimes bowl wrap. They're actually overheating. Now, for all you guys that think it's perfectly natural for your snake to curl up on its hotspot or to curl up underneath a radiated heat panel in order to digest its food, imagine what a handicap it would be to a tropical snake if it had to be tied to a certain spot for two or three days in order to digest its meal. False, 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 false. Tropical snakes remain active after eating. They do not require to warm up in order to digest their food. perfect example this terranium guy in here both the snakes that we've had in the terranium exhibit very strong diurnal cycles and they come out at night into ambush position on feeding night they feed and what do they do after they've fed do they seek out a hot spot do they hide in their underground tub to digest their meal no they don't do that they finish their meal they reset up the ambush and they remain active and ready to eat again. They do not need the addition of heat in order for digestion to occur. I don't know whether you remember a few years back there was a video on uh, one of the documentary channels about some fishermen in the Amazon that were actually heavily fined for uh, disturbing a anaconda which had just eaten. It had obviously eaten a very large meal. It was bulging in the midriff section. Where did the fisherman find this snake? Was it sunbathing? Was it wrapped around a hot rock? No, it was in the river. The river would be cooler than ambient temperature. 
the snake did not seek out heat in order to digest its meal. It was in the river. Digestion is an exothermic activity and your snakes are capable of generating at least a small amount of their own heat. So, what other activities in snakes might be exothermic and might have them cool seeking in order to prevent them from overheating? It's a surefire bet that if oxygen uptake is increased and there is a metabolic acceleration that your snakes have gone exothermic. Think about when you see your snakes cool seeking. They cool seek when they're building follicles. They are not building follicles because we cool. They are seeking cool because they overheat from building follicles. It's an acceleration in metabolic activity. Shedding, another example of an exothermic activity for a snake. Mating, when your snakes mate, that's quite a strenuous exercise for them and it is exothermic. They will be warmer during mating than they would be if they were not. Eggs, egg incubation. The last two weeks of egg incubation, you will notice that your incubator starts to rise in temperature. The eggs have gone exothermic. Oxygen uptake is accelerated and a byproduct of that burning or exothermic activity is not only a warming of the eggs but also an increase in CO2 and water production which is why you get the additional condensation in those last couple of weeks when the eggs metabolic activity is sky high. The snakes are fully developed inside the egg and they're absorbing the last of those yolk reserves ready for hatching and their metabolic activity is sky high. They have gone exothermic. So here's a building female. Bull wrapping. And her temperature is 29.5 exactly the same as the other snakes in the room and one and a half degrees centigrade above ambient temperature. This behavior, bowl wrapping, we normally associate with cool seeking and indeed this female is trying to cool because her metabolic activity from producing those follicles is so high that if she did not cool she would overheat she is not trying to get cooler to build follicles. She is trying to stay cool because she's building follicles. That might sound like a detail difference, but it's not. It's actually hugely significant. This snake did not eat yesterday, but clearly she is building and she is cool seeking except she's not cool she is exactly the same temperature as the other snakes in the room and she is maintaining a body temperature above ambient by about one and a half degrees if she didn't bowl wrap she would overheat her water bowl is at 29 degrees she is so warm She's actually warmed up her own water bowl. This snake has a water bowl at 28.5, which is much closer to ambient temperature. This snake also has a water bowl at 28.5. So you can see quite clearly that these snakes are generating their own heat. So here's that same girl again. 
a couple of days later and you can see that she is still soaking in her water bowl and she is going into shed but clearly she's looking very chunky and has been building for several months now and if I heat gun where she sloshed water you can see the temperature is 28 degrees inside her tub let's just do that again Twenty-eight degrees inside her tub, but if I heat gun the snake itself, wow! The snake itself is twenty-nine point five degrees. No wonder this snake is bowl wrapping. Her metabolic activity is so high, the combination of building follicles and shedding means that her temperature is one and a half degrees above the temperature inside her tub. Extraordinary. You can see that no matter how many times I repeat this exercise, That's the, that's the temperature of the tub where she sloshed water everywhere and that's her body temperature that's pretty amazing Just in case you were wondering, it's still cooling down outside but the temperature in the snake room is quite cool, 27.8. The air conditioning has been on outside in the outside living room and you can see that the effect of the air conditioning has not only cooled the snake room but it has sucked moisture out of the snake room as well. So to all you guys who get a lot of slugs but maintain that their temperatures are perfect uh, have a think about that if your hot spot is 32 degrees centigrade that is way too hot i maintain temperatures of 28 to 29 all year round that seems to be within my snakes comfort zone and my snakes try their level best through either cooling or adjusting their metabolic levels in order to maintain a perfectly constant body temperature. Why do snakes incubate eggs? It's to protect them, right? To stop them from being predated. No, it's not. Your snake is precisely controlling the temperature of that pile of eggs by wrapping its body around the eggs and controlling its body temperature by adjusting its metabolic rate. During the incubation, if it gets too cold, your snake will add heat and its oxygen uptake will increase. To everybody who believes it's necessary to cool your snakes in order to get them to build follicles, not true. Your snakes respond to the outside season and the reason that they need to cool is because they've gone exothermic during their build. If they did not cool, they would overheat. So, if your hot spots are too hot, of course your snakes are going to bowl wrap. Here, if I maintain my temperatures at 28, 29 centigrade, bowl wrapping is actually minimal. They don't do it a great deal, but building is actually not a constant process. They do build erratically. They will have a strong build phase where they do overheat and bowl wrap, and then they will go back to a period of relative inactivity. You do not need to cool your snakes in order for them to build follicles or build sperm. In the tropics, snakes never get cold. In fact, they spend almost all of their time trying to stay cool. So all we need to do is not drop our temperatures to something radical. 
it's to maintain our temperatures at something a little bit lower than you're probably keeping your snakes at now and letting them generate some of their own heat through their own metabolic activity. They will be able to maintain their body heat above ambient temperature provided that you don't drop temperatures too cold. If temperatures get too cold they will start to shut down, they'll start to get compromised immune systems and they'll start to get sick. I would suggest that 28 degrees is ideal 32 degrees is too hot. My snakes never get to 32 degrees and they don't like it if it gets in excess of 30 degrees. So, tropical snakes can maintain their body temperatures above ambient without the need to find a hot rock or to sunbathe. They are quite capable of doing that. If your hot spots are too hot, you might want to lower temperatures to a little bit lower given what I've just told you and your snake's ability to be able to maintain its own body temperature within a certain window. If you're cooling during the breeding season, don't. Leave your temperatures at the ideal temperature that your snakes need to be at and they will do the rest. You do not need to shock cool them in order to make them breed. The reason that your snakes cool during the breeding season is because they're building follicles and that's an exothermic reaction. Without cooling your snakes would overheat. They are not trying to get cold. They are simply trying to maintain a constant body temperature. Because they're building follicles they are generating heat and they need to lose some of that heat in order to maintain a body temperature within their preferred range. They are thermal regulating to maintain a constant body temperature. They are not thermal regulating to get cold so that they can build follicles. Again, imagine in the wild, in a tropical snake, what a handicap that would be if they couldn't breed unless it got cold because out here in the tropics, it never gets cold, so they wouldn't breed. Okay guys, that's controversial. I have been deliberately provocative, perhaps a little too severely so, because there are indeed many ways to successfully breed ball pythons. They are quite adaptable animals. Nature will always find a way, but hopefully I've provided some stimulus for you to rethink some of the things that you're doing and why you're doing them in order to give your snakes the best shot at being successful breeders. So, drop down in the comments, I expect some very lively discussion on this one. Thanks for watching, don't forget to share, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.